Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. Today, we have back with us on the program, uh, Morgan Hammond of HDA Accounting Group. Morgan, say hello. Hello. It's nice to be with you again. Yeah, it's great to have you back on here. It's um, you know, relevant what we're going to talk about today. Um, you know, obviously on the show, we like to talk about challenges and, and problems that we see, you know, the dentist and practice owners face and how they, how they can solve those problems, how our expert speakers on this program can help. Um, but one thing I want to talk about a little bit, we'll just kind of jump right in, um, is your background, right? So mm-hmm. this unique background, usually accountants are kind of have the stereotype that we think about them usually kind of, I think square is a pretty good way right. to um, describe accountants, but uh, you, you flew fighter jets, right? Yeah, I sure did back, back yeah. in the day. So uh, just tell us a little bit about that. How'd you become, how'd you start? How'd you, how'd you even end up in, in one? Yeah. Those? So I started in college. Um, I was on a Navy scholarship. So they, they paid for my undergraduate, which I did at university, university of Arizona in Tucson. I was in the ROTC program there. The day I graduated college, I went in as an officer and reported to flight school. And this was contrary to like most of my family has been in you know private industry, significant number of CPAs in the family tree, <laughs> including my dad, yeah. my brother and everybody. And so like I, I enjoyed accounting. I did, did some accounting in college uh, in my business degree, but uh, my, my passion was to be a, be a fighter pilot. Uh, specifically a Navy, uh, a Naval aviator. And so that, that's what I went and did and uh, spent about two and a half years in flight training uh, before I went to my first operational squadron. It was in 1998 uh, and, and was there for a little over three years. Did per- the Persian Gulf in Iraq back then. It was uh, Operation Southern Watch. So Saddam Hussein was still around. So we patrolled the, the Southern fly zone. And then after that, I was an instructor pilot on the F-18 and did that for a little over four years. So all in, I was in the Navy uh, about 10 and a half years and had the big choice. Do you stay in? Do you go airlines or do you go private industry? And so I went sure. private industry, went back to, to school, got a master's degree in accounting, um, sat for the CPA exam. And then, uh, as I sometimes jokingly refer, you know, I had to grow up and get a real job at some point. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we thank you very much for your service as much appreciated. Oh. And, uh, yeah, it's an amazing uh, background. I know for a lot of our listeners, they're going to kind of hear that background and we go, yeah, this is a guy I want to talk to. Yeah. I think it directly, like when I look at what that experience, how that helps me today, it's certainly not debits and credits you know, on accounting. Yeah. Uh, it, what you'd learn, you learn a couple things very well in, in naval aviation. One is systemization and procedures. You know, there's a reason you can launch F-18s off aircraft carriers every day with run around with a bunch of 19 year olds run around right. the aircraft. Yeah. And it's because you have high level of standardization and you don't, you do everything possible not to learn a hard lesson twice um, right. because it, it can cost lives. And if you translate that into your business, the, a lot of, it can achieve a, a lot of good results. If you have a high level of standardization and systemization in your practice, doesn't matter which employee is you know serving the client or treating a patient if you can have that that standardized experience where and then if you do have a situation that goes sideways in the practice if you debrief that and learn from that and apply a correction that's then standardized across your team it avoids learning those hard things twice whether that's something at the front desk or you know applied to a dental practice um just any, any type of patient experience or billing issue, you know, not collecting money, that type of thing. So right. you learn how to do that really well in the Navy. I've translated that into my business and certainly what things I talk about with our dentists. The other thing that you learn really well, and, and that's applicable today, current events, which, which we can get to is when there's a lot of information out, you know, floating around a lot of noise. Um, and you need, yeah. you need to learn like a specific, Okay, how do I take all this data and just boil this down into the, the what you need to know? 
you get really good at that in naval aviation because you know you might sit through a couple hour brief there's all this data but the, in reality in a couple hours you know, it, you could be at night in country and all you have is what's on your kneeboard card for the print, right. print and data so you, you you can cut through the 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 bs so to speak and really do right. so it and so that's how i that's how i design our reports and interact with our clients is you know there's all this you you can make accounting and tax really boring and, and just have your eyes sort of glass over that stereotypical account you kind of mentioned at the beginning you know or you can just cut right to it and say here's all this stuff this is what it means and this is what you need to do right and, and yeah i mean having you know having information right having that knowledge and wisdom gives you the ability to make good decisions right it's a mm -hmm. crap shoot. It. And, and it sounds like your background in accounting and what have you, I mean, there's got to be a book in the works at some time. I know you've, you've yeah. lost <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, you got to write that now. It sounds like a, sounds like a, a bestseller um, to me. Um, Maureen, you talked about noise. Um, people who listen to the show and, and know me know I spend a lot of time on forums listening, sometimes contributing, but mostly just listening and watching what's going on and what dentists are talking about. Um, what the community is talking about and it is noisy there's a, and there's a lot of information out there and when i look at a lot of facebook groups for instance and i look at the conversations somebody's always wrong right mm -hmm. so there, there's if there's always somebody wrong when you look at these arguments i don't know who they are often right i can try yeah. to guess um but you do know what's right and wrong so we've got you here let's talk a little bit about what's going on as far as um What's the latest and, and the newest information out there as far as tax so, credits? Yeah, right now, like in real time, what's happening right now, there's two things that I think are worthy topics for current events. One is the HHS phase four. That opens tomorrow. And so we're recording here on uh, Tuesday, the 28th. It opens Wednesday, the 29th. It's going to be open for a month. So this is something everybody's concerned about. I've got, I've had multiple emails over the past few days inquiring about this and, uh, and I'll be issuing some correspondence later today with just the, as we've been talking about the new board guard checklist on, on what you need to do, but the HHS phase four, one thing that I know people are going to be frustrated with because I'm frustrated with it is just the complete lack of specifics on who qualifies and how the funding will be determined. It's very vague, lots of flowery language. And they it's intended for providers that serve in those rural areas and they have a, a, a resource you can click and put in your where you're located and it'll give you feedback if you qualify based on if you're a rural provider. But a, a pretty large portion of the fund is set aside for and get this it is a quote unquote from the hhs website a broad range of providers with changes in operating revenues and expenses well okay that's everybody that's, right 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 i don't think anyone put up the same right. numbers in the last year so yeah. that that's going to be everybody so what that means the way i interpret that is like, if you own a dental practice you can apply um right there is zero specifics on how they're going to divvy up that 17 billion that's set aside for those quote unquote broad range of providers. So right. recent questions I've had, including up to this morning is Morgan, is it worth my time to apply? The answer, I don't know that you know, there's, you may as well, right? Right. You know, don't, don't pass it up. So it's very broad. It's very vague. And so that that's the, my answer is I cannot advise on if you will get any funds from HHS phase four, or if you do, what amounts those will be, because there's not, there's just no data, unfortunately. Right. So my advice is if we're gonna boil this down to some action items, yeah, def apply, <laughs> why, why not? All they could say is no. Uh, the money does not have to be paid back and you, you have two years to spend it all the way to December 31, 2022. So why not? Um, what they're wanting is minimal information. They want an FEIN, pretty easy. They want a most recent business tax return, also pretty easy. You know, we're after uh, September 15th. Those should all be filed for 2020. Unless you're a sole proprietor, you might file your business results on Schedule C, in which case, you know, that's going to be due here in another couple of weeks. 
so but the, the most recent business tax return is pretty easy to collect. The the one item that's a little more challenging is they want financial statements for six different quarters. And they're non-sequential. And it is quarter one, quarter three, and quarter four of 2019, quarter three and quarter four of 2020, and quarter one of 2021. So I think what's going to happen with a lot of dollars, they're going to see this and they're going to email their accountant. And that that's six different P&Ls to pull. And, right. was, and that's going to be time consuming and time is of the essence because they've waited. I've been checking this, this HHS website for the last month and it's only in very, very recently this, this is information's even become available. So uh, I, we're fortunate that we have a, a pretty powerful proprietary reporting software where I can go in and write reports. So I've already written one. So it's, it's a P and L with six columns and has all these all lined out on one page. Yep. And starting this afternoon, we're, we're just going to generate it for every one of our clients and just give it to them. <laughs> so, sure. you know what? Here you go. Just let's no reason not to apply. You'll have that data right now. Yep. I anticipate, you know, for those doctors where they have an accountant where, you know, maybe it just takes takes a while <laughs> to, to get things, you know, getting these six different P&Ls might, might be a source of frustration. Um, but it's a very it's a very specific set of data they're looking for, but right. those three things, you, you give it to them and then it's just wait and see, you know, if you get some, some stimulus grade, if not, you know, I guess at least, you know, you didn't leave anything on the table. Yeah. I, I think, you know, if, if you can't get a PNL out of your account in a couple of days, in my opinion, <laughs> it should, it's a, it seems like such a low bar, but I get one at the end of every month. Yeah. So I have mine, yeah. I can go back into a cloud and grab them. And yeah. Literally have all six of them within 20 minutes. So yeah, um, not on one sheet. That's pretty clever that you have that. By the way, <laughs> try and make um, it easy. <laughs> yeah. So based on the rest of the information that you talked about, it sounds like once you have the documentation, which shouldn't take you long if you're organized, 30 mm -hmm. minutes to apply, right? Yeah, just uh, upload it. I don't know what that looks like. You know, it opens tomorrow, so we'll, we'll see. I um, but I, I don't see any reason. You know, why not? You know, right. If you get some, if you get some relief money, great. Um. So that's the, that is the real time topic right now. You know, yep. and that, that a portal is going to be open for a month. So I would say, why not? Yep. The other, the other um, current event is the, the employee retention credits been out for a while. Yep. Um, it's still open this year. And, but there's a change for quarter three where one frustration has been, and I'm sure you've heard it too, is these doctors where they did a startup or bought a practice right at the start of the pandemic and the cutoff for uh, all kinds of relief, including PPP is, uh, was February 15th. You had to be in business, you know, by February 15th, 2020. And so that excluded right. a lot of new, uh, new business owners, whether that was a scratch start or a purchase. And, and the purchase is almost, like a, like a startup because they, they have a brand new entity. They purchase those assets and they're, they're really starting their own business with some right. purchase, purchase clients and some user right. equipment. So a picture that I, we have some clients where they literally closed on their practice March 1, 2020 and got shut yep. down late March. I, I, I can't imagine a more stressful. Yeah. I was a startup. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. yeah. And then you get excluded from all this relief. So that that's right. been a source of massive frustration. And that, that is, there's a new uh, relief out that's going to help with that. It's the recovery startup business portion of the employee retention credit. And it's new for quarter three. And what that says is if you started or, and in my opinion, the language says, if you're, if your startup business and you started after February 15, 2020, you qualify. But I think if you did a practice acquisition and, and it was an asset purchase, you, you're starting your business as well. So it's you started or acquired a practice after 15, February 15, 2020, and you have a million or less in annual gross receipts, you can apply for ERC in quarter three of 2021. And what that means is, is for all the employees that you paid in quarter three, excluding owners, seven, you, it's 70% of wages up to 10,000 per quarter. So that's 7,000 per employee uh, that you could get a payroll tax credit on. And that's capped at 50,000 total. Right. Yep. Uh, so that that's new. You know, that that's going to be some, that's some very welcome news for those, those new business owners that have had, 
been, been excluded from a lot of other relief out there just simply due to timing. So that that's very, very good news. Yeah. And that's, I, I think I know a couple of people that need to contact you about that. Um, because I, I did have, I saw it happen, you know, mm-hmm. and it was heartbreaking and, um, yeah, terrible, terrible timing for those startups. But it, it does sound like there's some options out there. So, so yeah. uh, real quickly, let me give the, the, um, our audience your website again. It is um, your with HDA. Yeah, H- yeah. You H- run the show over there, correct, Morgan? A big pardon? You run the show over there, correct? I, yeah, I do. I, I co-founded the firm. You know, with yep. my dad Ken and and Courtney's a partner. So we got three owners, about thirty employees. Um, I'm the company president. I do. I write all the correspondence that we've been talking about, and, and kind of make make sure things things happen, yeah. <laughs> and do do a lot of advising. You know, with our it's uh, website's hdagroupdental.com, correct? Yes. And you offer a free consultation as well. Sorry. Yeah, certainly. And I, you know, I do those personally. You know, and there's there's plenty of places you can book book that appointment. You know, on my calendar. And uh, you know, I always like to learn a little more about the the practice and the situation, and then I can walk through folks what we do and just see if it's a good fit, you know, all around. That's great. Well, we thank you so much for coming on. I definitely want to encourage the audience one more time to go hdagroupdental.com. Morgan, thank you for your service. And again, thank you for the information and coming on. We really appreciate it. No, it was my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Anytime. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.